This is Steamboat Willie. Prior to January 1st, 2024, it would have been against the law for me to include this video in anything I do, and Disney probably would send all sorts of legal takedown notices to me. But the copyright has expired, and now Steamboat Willie is in the public domain. That means anyone can use it for any reason. Before we get started, a disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, things change, and everything we talk about in this video only applies in the United States. Let's take a quick look at what copyright is and why we even have it. Copyright is a law. It was first passed in 1790, uh, though it's changed over the years, and it guarantees creators exclusive use of their content for a long time. You see, the framers of the Constitution recognized that it was important for people to be able to build on ideas from other people, so they baked copyright into the Constitution. It's to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for a limited time to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. That means a creator's claim on their own ideas would expire after a while so that the general public could build on those ideas. The length of time that a creator has by copyright protection has changed over time and is complicated and it's based on where the work was created. But generally speaking, nowadays, the copyright extends for the life of the creator plus 70 years. That means if I have copyrighted material and I die in, say, 2050, that work won't be available in the public domain until 2120, 70 years after I die. Public domain is a term that we use to describe content that is free to use in your own work. Now that Steamboat Willie is in the public domain, anyone can use that version of Mickey Mouse however they want. In fact, we've already seen one horror movie trailer and promises of video games starring that version of Mickey. You can use, you can even sell copies of books that are in the public domain. For instance, you could print and sell copies of The Great Gatsby, Dracula, Frankenstein, Alice in Wonderland. Because copyright is complicated, there are a number of ways you might be infringing on copyright and not even know it. Have you ever grabbed an image from the internet and use it in your own work? So let's say that you're writing a research paper on how sailboats work. If you go to Google, find an image you like and put it in your paper, you've just created copyright infringement. You've just committed copyright infringement. That is a crime and it's unethical and it's easy to do. So you might say to yourself, self, what if I cite the image properly? What if I say where I got it from? Well, it turns out that doesn't really make it legal. The only way you can use copyright material is if the original creator gives you permission or you wait until 70 years after they die and then you write your research report on cell loads. So what are your options? Well, you could look for an image in the public domain, but you might not find anything you like. And it turns out that many creators are starting to share their work in ways that are more permissive than copyright. These creators are using a licensing scheme known as Creative Commons. And when you license something under Creative Commons, that means that people are able to do what they want with it. And there's a few different flavors of Creative Commons. So sometimes they can, creators can say, hey, anyone can use my work for whatever they want. No strings attached. That's Creative Commons Zero. Oftentimes, creators share their work as CCBY, which means that you can use their work, but you have to give the original creator credit for it. We call this Creative Commons attribution. There's some other restrictions that creators can put on their work too. They might say, hey, you can use this work, but you can't change it. Or, hey, you can use this work, but you can't make money on it. Or, hey, you can use this work, but you have to also share your work under the same license. So you can go to the Creative Commons website and take a peek at that. That's at creativecommons.org. And you should because some licenses limit how you can use work. I find the easiest thing to do is to use work licensed under Creative Commons Zero or Creative Commons BY because then you can use the work, modify the work, sell the work if you want. And all you have to do is give credit to the author. And remember, in Creative Commons Zero, you don't even have to credit the author, but I do it. It's good karma. So if you want to find work licensed under Creative Commons, you should check out openverse.org. This is a great website, and there's a ton of websites like this. In the, at openverse.org, you can search by topic, filter by license, and even explore some audio clips. There's plenty of other places where you can find the database of work protected by Creative Commons as well. Um, but then there's these other sites that have really cool licenses too. Whenever I need an image for work, my first stop is unsplash.com. Unsplash is a huge collection of photographs. They're licensed under the Unsplash license, but that license is very similar to the Creative Commons Zero. You can do whatever you want with these images, and you don't even need to credit the creator, although I typically do. And let me tell you, these photos are fantastic. They're super high quality. They're put in the world by professional photographers. Occasionally in the results, you'll see images listed under Unsplash Plus, and that means that you need to have a paid account to access those. But in general, Unsplash has tons of sweet images you can use. I also go to Pixabay. Pixabay is a lot like Unsplash, and you can use these images for free as well. 
but they also have videos, music, sound effects, and illustrations. And so if you're looking for something that's drawn, uh, so it's not a photo, this is a great place to go. Again, you don't have to give credit to the author, but I do whenever I can. There are other ways to protect intellectual property too that are not copyright. Uh, and remember that, generally speaking, copyright protects art like books, theatrical works, movies, paintings, and more. Uh, and you may have heard of the term trademark, and that's a bit different. For the most part, trademark protects companies and products. So let's look at Steamboat Willie again. Disney can copyright a theme park. So you might think that since Steamboat Willie is in the public domain, you could start a theme park based around that cartoon. But you probably can't because trademark would prevent you from starting a theme park based on Steamboat Willie because it's quite likely that customers will confuse your park, which is based on Disney idea, for a Disney theme park. And if you ever did open this park, probably Disney would most likely sue you. Still, there are ways to skirt copyright. Fair use, for instance, you've probably heard of that, is a part of copyright law uh, that makes allowances for people to use copyrighted work without their permission. Parody is a fantastic example. So if you've ever wondered how Weird Al can make songs like Fat, which is a parody of Michael Jackson's Bad, uh, Word Crimes, which is Weird Al's take on Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines, or Amish Paradise, a, a popular riff on Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise, well, it turns out parody is completely legal. Of course, there are some stipulations, but in general, parody is pretty permissible. It is worth mentioning that Weird Al does get permission before he releases a parody of a song, even though he doesn't have to. That man is a national treasure. In addition to parody, fair use has exemptions for other reasons as well. Notably, there are exceptions for educational purposes. So I could put some copyright content in my courses under fair right, and I probably couldn't get in trouble. But the law is very vague here, and lawsuits that focus on fair use are notoriously difficult to predict because the outcome is based on judges, and they have a lot of latitude when making these decisions. In fact, fair use is so murky that I avoid it at all costs, and I encourage you to as well, if, uh, if you have other options. Ironically, I did use some copyright clips in this video under fair use, and I think that I'm fine, but that's a departure from what I normally do. Between sites like Pixabay and Unsplash and Public Domain and other places to get my content to use legally for free, there's really no incentive for me to use copyrighted material. One mistake I do see people make very often, other than improperly invoking fair use, is people using royalty-free images. The term royalty-free is misleading because it does have the word free in it. What royalty-free really means is that you purchase the image once, but you can use it as many times as you want without paying royalty each time. There's many websites that have royalty-free images. Perhaps the biggest is Getty Images. Uh, just make sure that if you encounter a site with royalty-free images, you understand uh, any associated cost. And usually it's a one-time cost. Lastly, it is worth talking about AI for a minute. As of January 2024, AI work cannot be copyrighted in the United States. Other countries have other laws, and this might change in the future in the United States, but right now, AI-generated work is legal to use in your own work. So what's the takeaway today? Well, I, I think if you need pictures for work, and uh, for something you're doing, you should go to Unsplash or Pixabay. And remember, Pixabay also has illustrations, video, and music, so you can find all sorts of good stuff there. You can always generate art using AI. Now, I like doing that because leveraging AI is a good skill to hone and is kind of fun. Some AI art generating tools like Midjourney can cost money, but you can use OpenAI's Dolly for free and Google has some services too. In fact, you might be able to generate images right in Google Slides in the future. Remember, it's always good karma to give credit to the original artist, even if you don't have to. Let's be careful out there.